we enter the dystopian world of Yggdrasil, a dive massively multiplayer online role-playing game or DMMORPG. It was released in 2012-26 and is extremely popular in Japan due to its expansive map and high player freedom. It is now 12 years later and the game is about to end. Momonga, guild leader, and the only player remaining is waiting until the server is shut down. He goes for a walk in the game and takes with him Sabas the butler and the combat maids called the Pleiades, who are all non-player characters or NPCs. He heads into the throne room of the great tomb of Nazareth, where he is met with Albedo, another NPC with horns and black wings, and changes her settings to someone who is deeply in love with him. The timer counts down, but when it ends, Momonga is still in the game, now fully transformed into his inhuman character, and the NPCs are moving on their own volition. It's a mystery to him, so he starts to act by gathering all the guardians. Each of the guardians is introduced, and they all pledge their loyalty to him. Momonga gives orders to the guardians and Sabas with the goal of collecting information and finding out if other players are also in this new world. We learn more about the guardians of Nazareth and how they view Momonga as their ruler, a supreme being who stayed behind. They learn that Nazareth seems to have been transported into a different world, and they need more information. Momonga goes outside and sees the new world, one that he and his guild members have unknowingly created. Before the episode ends, we see trouble brewing. A man is planning to attack a village, and Momonga tries to navigate an item, the mirror of remote viewing. When it works, he sees a village being attacked by knights. Initially, he decides to leave them, as there is no benefit in saving them. But he remembers the time that Touch Me, another player, saved him when he was in danger from other players. He decides to save the villagers, also with the intent to test his own strength. He saves two sisters and gives them a red healing potion and a horn they can use to summon an army of goblins to protect themselves. After killing some knights, Momonga starts to feel increasingly inhuman, just like the character he has become. He then approaches the villagers, wearing a mask, and introduces himself as Ein's Uol Gown, which is also the name of his guild. His true intention is to make his name known in hopes of attracting the attention of other players in the world. He also gathers further information from the village chief learning about the different countries and empires that are on bad terms. The knights who attack the village bear the Baharuth crest, but it might be a trap set by the slain theocracy to create a feud between the Baharuth Empire and the Riestes Kingdom. The royal head warrior of Riestes, Gezef, soon arrives, bringing with him new dangers. Magic casters are sent to Karn by the slain theocracy to eliminate Gezef, the kingdom's strongest warrior. They arrive with Archangel Flame Monsters from Yggdrasil. Gezef offers to hire Ainz, but Ainz, under the alias Momon, declines the offer. Gezef thanks him for saving the village and desperately asks him to protect them once more as he heads into battle. Gezef fights a losing battle with the magic casters from the slain theocracy. Just as he is about to be slain, Ainz switches places with him using an item he had gifted Gezef earlier. He then arrives in E. Rantel. Ainz is accompanied by Nabe, a Pleiades combat maid disguised as an adventurer. Their striking appearance, Ainz in black-plated armor and helmet yet marked only as a copper-plated adventurer, quickly draws attention. In a local pub, Ainz gets into a brief squabble, throwing a man into a table and breaking a blue potion belonging to a red-haired, iron-ranked girl adventurer. Momon, as Ainz is called here, replaces it with a red potion. The girl brings it to a pharmacist, Neferia, and his grandmother, Lizzie Balier, to have it assessed. They are both shocked by the potion's rarity and value. Back in the Adventurer's Guild, Momon looks for quests that could quickly raise his status. He soon receives an invitation from a group called Swords of Darkness, consisting of four members. They are preparing for a monster eradication quest when Neferia requests Momon's services. Meanwhile, a suspicious girl named Clementine arrives at a cemetery in E. Rantel. She teams up with a priest and plans to kidnap Neferia for his ability to use any magical item. 
Inferea and the group of adventurers he hired as guards are on their way to Carney. They take a break when Lucrute decides to tease Momon and Nabe and says that they are lovers. That causes Nabe to let out a slip of the tongue and mention that Momon already has albedo. As they are about to continue their journey, a group of ogres and goblins arrive, and the adventurers fight them. All are in awe of Momon's strength, saying he should be on the higher ranks as an adventurer. Meanwhile, Momon recognizes their effective team dynamics and is full of praise. He also remembers his own guild members and how they went on quests with other players. We then are back at the cemetery with Clementine, the girl who wants to kidnap Enfirea. She is getting help from the priest, and in return, she is helping him perform a ritual to create an army of zombies. The group of adventurers with Enfirea arrives at Karn. They see that the village is now fenced, protected by goblins. They discover that the goblins were summoned by Enri, the girl that Eines had saved before. It turns out that Enfirea is the pharmacist's friend that Enri had mentioned to Eines when he saved her. Enri shares how Eines saved their village, and at the mention of Albedo, Nefirea is able to piece the bits of information together and realizes that Eines is Momon. Nefirea runs to Momon, and his true intention is revealed. He had requested Momon only to learn about the red potion and nothing more, and admits it to him. With all doubts removed, they head into the forest, where it is guarded by a magical beast called the Wise King of the Forest. It turns out to be a giant hamster, which is quickly defeated into submission under Momon's command. After completing their quest, the four adventurers take Enfirea to his home, where Clementine is waiting. Momon comes under the adventurers' guild headquarters after registering Hamusuke, the wise king of the forest. He meets Enfirea's grandmother, and they go together so he could collect his reward money. Upon arriving at the house, we see that the four adventurers have become zombies, and Inferea is missing. Inferea's grandmother hires Momon to save her grandson. Momon and Nabe quickly locate Enferea, and they immediately come to the cemetery and face an army of the undead. Momon summons higher-level undead NPCs to take care of the army, and they move forward to meet Khajiit and Clementine. Khajiit summons an undead dragon to fight Nabe. The skeletal dragon is resistant to magic, so Nabe fights only with a sword, but is still at par with the dragon. On another part of the cemetery, Momon is taking on Clementine. He notices the dragons and orders Nabe to take on her true form as Narbaral Gamma. This allows Nabe to quickly finish her battle by casting a high-level tier of magic that even a bunch of skeletal dragons resistant to magic, cannot block. Momon also finishes off Clementine with ease, even after giving her a handicap. He slowly crushes her body, and he's only torturing her because Clementine did it to Ninja, the adventurer Momon worked with. After their swift battles, Momon finds Enfirea with his eyes gouged out. Momon brings Enfirea's sight back and breaks the magical item that was forced on him. Sebas, Pleiades, and Shaltair are in E. Rantel on a mission to look for people with magic and bring them to Eins. They hear about Brain Unglaus, a man rumored to be as strong as Gazef, the royal head warrior. Shaltair comes after Brain alone, with Sebas and the Pleiades leaving for another mission to gather information at the capital. Brain runs away, and during Shaltier's chase, she faces a group of adventurers. She learns that there are rangers stationed farther. These adventurers, alongside rangers stationed deeper within the forest, try to fend off the vampire, but Shaltier's overwhelming strength makes short work of them. She quickly dispatches the adventurers. Back in Nazareth, Albedo informs Eins that Shaltier has gone rogue, suspecting betrayal. Eins, however, realizes that Shaltir is not acting on her own and concludes that someone else must be controlling her. Momon is requested by the guild to take care of the vampire situation. He accepts the mission and says that he has been hunting the vampire for a long time. That vampire is Shaltir. Eins is able to locate Shaltir and comes to her with albedo. 
Shaltir is in the middle of a clearing in the forest, not moving at all. Ions determines that she is under mind control, but without orders, he uses a rare item and casts a supreme spell that can remove the mind control over Shaltir. But it does not work. He is shocked by this revelation because only a world-level item can nullify that super-tier magic spell. They withdraw in the meantime as he mulls over the possibility of another player existing in the world he is in. Ainz comes to a mausoleum to acquire world-level items. We are introduced to Pandora's actor, an NPC created by Momonga to be the guardian of the treasury in the mausoleum. Golems created in the likeness of the other supreme beings, Momonga's Nakamas, are on display. We learn how these players have left their items to Momonga when they retired from the game. Ainz shares his plans to Albedo. He will have the Guardians wield the world-level items, and he will fight Shaltir alone with the promise to come back alive. Ainz comes to the forest to battle Shaltir. He casts several spells on himself as preparation. When done with all of his preparation, Ainz does a full-on attack, damaging the entire clearing of the forest. Shaltir remains in place, although she is now moving and has transformed into full battle gear. Ainz asks Shaltir who her master is. Her inner consciousness gets a bit baffled, and she questions her actions, fighting against Ainz. But she retaliates because she was attacked. The battle ensues, both knowledgeable about each other's strengths and weaknesses. Although Shaltir surprises Ainz with a few offensive and defensive skills, the latter is unaware of Shaltir's abilities. She takes damage, and after some time, she pulls out her trump card in her jar, which is her double. She summons her household of bats, rats, and wolves to pierce them with her lance and gain healing powers. Ainz casts a powerful attack, completely obliterating Einher Jar and Shaltiar's household. But now, Ainz's MP, or mana points, is low, while Shaltiar's HP, or hit points, is still full. But alas, it seems like Ainz has not revealed his trump card yet. After several exchanges of attacks, Ainz reveals that he has used a false data spell and deceived Shaltir. He feigned that he was affected by Shaltir's attacks and pretended to be unaware of her skills when he is completely knowledgeable about them. After going through all NPC settings, Ainz transforms into a warrior and is geared with full armor, ready for hand-to-hand -hand combat. He changes his weapons one after the other, the weapons left to him by his guild members, including Shaltir's creator. He defeats Shaltir with the strength of the guild of Ainz Uol Gaon. Ainz resurrects Shaltir, who has no memory of what happened. He shares that Sebas is not in Nazarek because he is bait. He still intends to find out who is the player that targeted Shaltir. He prepares the Guardians and himself for an unknown enemy that can harm Nazarek. In the slain Theocracy, the captain of the Black Scripture and Zeshi Zetsume discuss the mystery of Ainz Ual Gaon and the recent vampire attack that killed two Scripture members and injured Lady Kyra badly. Zeshi likes Ainz because she believes he might give her a strong child. Meanwhile, one of the original 13 heroes, Ingress, and the Platinum Dragon Lord talk about a potential dark and powerful player from Yggdrasil. Gazef Stranoff is in Riestiz's capital when the nobles decide to have the annual battle in Baharuth. The king apologizes for not helping Karn Village more. After Princess Renner and her servant Climb arrive, the king tells Gazef to thank Ainz Ual Gaon for saving him. After Ainz finishes his job as Momon, he returns to Nazarek to inform Albedo about the important country states near Nazarek. Albedo is thrilled to see him. Shaltir drinks herself into a stupor, even though she was the one who let Ainz take control of her mind. Sabas's butler tries to cheer her up. Cositis is tasked with fighting the lizard men and collecting their bodies to create an undead army. Lizardman chieftain Shasryu and his brother Zaryusu discuss daily life when a dark figure appears in the sky, 
warning them of an attack in eight days. Zariuso suggests that Red Eye Dragon, Tusk Razor Tail, and Small Fang were together. Tribes Yellow Speckle and Sharp Edge have both been defeated by Dragon Tusk, so it is unlikely that they will join forces. The chieftain sends Zariusu to make deals with other tribes. Zariusu meets Crush Lulu, who is the Red Eye tribe's interim chief and priestess. He gives her an automatic mating call because he wants to marry her. They decide to work together after a rough start. Zarius and Crush go to Dragon Tusk Village to make an alliance, but Chieftain Zen Borogugu will not join unless Zarihusu proves himself in battle demiurge and declare talk about how Eclair wants to topple Nazarick's throne, which was built by Ankoro Mochi. While a fake version of Nazarick is being made, Kokita's subordinates tell him about Demiurge's mission for the scroll. Kokita's learns that there is going to be a war. Usu and Zenburu argue over who will be chief and crush his mate. Zanburo is physically stronger than Zariosu, but each time Zaryusu attacks, he freezes. Zenboro with an item called Frost Pain. Senboro knows he cannot keep fighting an item that will kill him as he fights. Dragon Tusk is now part of the Alliance. Chaz Ryu meets the three of them, and they all gather for a scouting report at the Razortail tribe, where the Herald predicted the first attack would occur. Kokidis watches them meet on a crystal and then gives the order to attack the Lizardmen. Put up a good fight until the five chiefs summon the Swamp Elementals with their magical abilities. Demiurge tells Kokitas that Lord Ains may want him to limit food supplies and send out troops to fight the lizard men. Kokita sends an elder lich caster commander into battle to crush any resistance. Zaryusu sacrifices his horse, the Hydra Snake Rororo, to get close to the lich and fight with Crush and Zinboro. Crush ends and Burrow are later knocked out, leaving Zarius to use what strength he has left to trap himself and the Lich Commander in a huge ice cage. After a lot of pain and many attacks, Zaryusu wins by surprising Leech by attacking him in a fog and driving his frost pain into his brain with the Lizardmen victorious in the battle Cockadist must answer his defeat to Ains. The lizard men celebrate victory. Zarius and Crush are startled when Zimbaru walks into their tent and finds them both alone and blushing. Back in Nazareth, Ains tells the others about the eighth floor guardian victim so they can be ready for unexpected events. Demiurge used sheep beastmen to make better scrolls and Ames promised to punish shelter. Later, Ains had given Kokidas a small army so that he could change the way how he leads and how he uses his resources. Kokidas's Kokidas's low-level zombies did not hurt Nazarick in any way, but Kokidas must face punishment. He has to eradicate the lizard men. Kokidas instead asks the lizard men to be spared into servitude to Nazarick, proposing. It could benefit them to see how governing a new people under Nazarick would work, because they might have to do it again in the future. Ains agrees, but Kokitas should not be afraid to rule. Ains wanted to know what Kokitas thought, so he told his guardians to think about helping Nazarick again until they did Demiurge. Tells the guardians that Ains wanted them to work together more on their plan to take over the world and that Kokitas' mission was a lizardman scouting mission. Ains is glad that his guardians are getting better and can smell Albedo's sweet scent. The guardians and Ains return to the battlefield the next day in a spectacular show of strength. They freeze the lake Gargantua throws a big rock into the middle of the lake, and the undead put on a royal ceremony, so Ains can sit atop the rock and speak to the lizard men. Demiurge uses controller magic to make the Shasha brothers obey Ains's orders. Kokitas will fight them alone in four hours, and if they win, they will never have to worry about Nazarick attacking them again. Five leaders of tribes talk about sending only themselves and letting Crush take charge. The tribe leaders send Zaryusu to meet with Crush while she is fighting, both of them know they will die. So Khrushchev asks Zaryusu to make her pregnant to keep their love alive. Zenburu Kayuku Zuzu Sukyu Juju and the Shasha brothers are preparing for war with Kokitas, while Ains and his guards get ready. The first floor is watched by the victim when he sees that the guards have made a makeshift throne of bones for him. He makes shelter bend and sits on her as punishment, because he does not want to sit on bones. 
This makes Albedo mad, but Shalter is extremely delighted about it. Ain stumbles upon Zariosu and Crush having intercourse while they watch the Lizardmen village through the magic mirror of remote viewing. Kokita shows up dressed as a floor guardian to join the Lizardmen champions in a fight. After the brutal one-sided battle, the Shasha brothers are the only Lizardmen who are still alive. Kokitas asks them what their names are and gives them the honor of dying by his god-slaying emperor Blade. Repeating the fog and surprise attack maneuver, he easily kills Chaz Ryu later. Ains congratulates Kokitas on his win and makes a deal with Crush. If Crush reports any signs of a revolt after he takes them in, Ains will bring Zarayusu back to life. Crush agrees and Ames brings Zaryasu back to life in the village where people now worship him as a god. After Zaryusu and Zenburu swore to stay loyal, Zaryozu asks for his brother and Zenburu to be returned to life as well, and Ains takes it into consideration having the lizard men keep their bodies safeguarded. Sinvest goes to the magician's guild in Riestas to buy a spell scroll on his way back to the mansion. He encounters a tormented woman and remembering player Touch Me's words saves her. Sabaz gives the man who threw her away money to flee town because the Eight Fingers crime syndicate will kill him. On his return, Solution is surprised by Sabasa's care for the girl, and having him heal her when she wakes up, she is fed and sobs for Sabasa's kindness. Revealing her name is to wear, Savas tells Solution not to tell Lord Ains about a meager girl. Gazette helps Brainon Glaus, who is depressed after meeting Chalteré over breakfast. Blue Rose's team of adamantite adventurers destroys an illegal crop used to produce a powerful narcotic known as black dust in a remote location. Blue Rose member Evil Eye finds a coated parchment that leads to eight fingers, leaders at the same time. The leaders of eight fingers discuss the burning of the crops and Sivas' rescue of the girl Zero promises Cocodal head of the slave department that his men will return. The girl Ains finds managing the lizard men budget and Nazarek's agents undercover funds, difficult Narbaril and Nebe talk to Ains about the ore samples he brought for an exchange box experiment to see which ore yields the most gold. He gives Nebe all the money he has left, reminding her to be covert and friendly to humans and frets over money. Gazeth spars with Climb and tells him about Ains who will gown who saved his life. Gazeth tells his vice chief that Climb's power cannot surpass that of a gold-ranked adventurer, but he can learn from experience. Gazev sees Prince Zanak and Marquis Ravong forming an alliance. Despite kingdom factions, Princess Renner introduces Climb to Blue Rose's leader, Lacus Alvain Dale Andra, and twin assassin Tina. Under Renner's guidance, they learned the code they discovered at the Black Dust Crop is a list of eight fingers' important locations in the capital city. Blue Roses brings Climb to investigate an underground brothel in the capital, but they worry their plans have been uncovered because a nobleman's daughter is one of Renner's maids. Meanwhile, Sivas has to wear serve as the maid of the manor he and Solution are using as cover, but they are later found by succulent Any Fingers, agent and constable Stefan Havish. The two ask for compensation for Sibes's crime of buying to wear. Despite anti-slavery laws, they leave Sabas for two days to consider their proposal. The Solution tells Ayn Sivas may have been compromised, while he is on a wall climb, tells Gagarin and Evil Eye who are having lunch, that Lachios wants them to mobilize. Evil Eye tells them about the new adamantite team Darkness consisting of and the wise king of the forest as a pet leaving. Gagarin, amazed by their feats, climb wishes he had such strength. But the duo advises him to go at his own pace and not lose his humanity. Brain Unglaus runs errands for Gazeth and passes a crowd watching drunk men attack a boy for bumping into them. Climb also passes by and intervenes. Both see. Sibas punch the issue with skill and speed. Climb asks Sivas for a strength lesson after seeing him recently. Sivas trusts Climb and teaches him to overcome death. Fear Climb overcomes his fear by thinking of Renner after being flooded with killing intent brain witnesses. Climb's ability to overcome fear and asks Sibas to teach him. Sibas kills three of Succulent's assassins, leaving Brain and Climb to handle the last two with their attackers down. 
Seabos uses a skill to interrogate one of them about succulent. The trio works together out of respect for each other to destroy Eight Fingers in Rees. Dies, they visit Succulent's brothel where Seabus rescue two are Seabus brain and climb, enter the brothel through the basement's front door and side entrance. Seabus charges the front while climb and brain take the back. Seabus warns the duo that he will kill inside opposition if necessary. They only ask that Coco doll and Succulent be captured. Seabus easily removes the steel door knocks out the guards and then finds Constable Stefan Havish assaulting a slave girl after slapping Stefan horribly. Sebas decides he is unworthy of life and kicks him in half-brain and climb defeat their opponents and find a Gagarin-made trap door to the underground storage while brain scouts with Climb Coco Doll and Succulent arrive by a hidden passage in front of the young warrior. Succulent uses illusion magic to injure Climb until Brain returns and defeats him with God, slash the trio, captures two eight fingers, and returns home. Brain returns to Gaysev's home, and the two have dinner discussing Climb's progress and shall tear by name. Sabas returns to the manor to find solution in her pleads attire, telling him Ains is in the next room, Climb. Returns to Renner, who is pleased he is safe. Render calls the maid she knows is spying on her to tell her how amazing Climb was. But she plans to kill her for disrespecting Climb's demiurge victim and Kokitas to testify about Sebus's possible betrayal to test Savasa's loyalty. He orders two hours' death. Sebas does so, and Kokitas blocks his attack, proving him a loyal servant to Nazareth after the real Ains arrives. He hears Tuare's full name and realizes she is Ninja's sister. The Swords of Darkness spellcaster, so he lets Sabas have her as a temporary maid. Renner and Blue Rose discuss Eight Fingers raids in the royal palace. But Marquis Revolt and Prince Zanak arrive with a solution. After discussing Renner's true identity, she reveals she has damning intelligence on the royal and noble factions and coerces Raven to lend his private army to Eight Fingers. He reluctantly agrees, and Zanak reveals that Barbro has a hidden storehouse in trade, with Eight Fingers, Renner also says that Geisev's stronghold is her trump card against the syndicate. Besides the help of Blue Rose, after a day of gathering food for Demi urges Arbelian sheep humans, Seabase and Solution return to the manor to find to our missing, and a note from Six Arms challenging Seabass for her freedom. Sabas remembers Aeon's words and messages, their boss Aeon's as Momong sends reinforcements to Albedo while initially reluctant. She sends Demi Urge's forces to destroy Eight Fingers. Ibero thinks Ain's old gown after the guild name is silly, preferring Momonga as shown by his original player banner on the wall and the guild flag on the floor after Seabass leaves to save Tuor from Six Arms Demiurge, tells the Pleiades Mare and Shalter about his operation, Guyana Plan, Climb Brain, and Lock Meyer Raid and Eight Fingers Base in the Royal Encampment. They meet Seabass, who was also summoned to fight the Six Arms. Sevis kills four Six Arms members and customers in seconds. Solution says that Zero is not one of the people in the room. Meanwhile, at Hilma's house, she wakes up to find her house surrounded by bushes, and Toma empties the manor after breaking Mare's leg to drag her away, while Antoma is snacking on a human body part. Gagarin fights her thinking she is with eight fingers. Tia and Evil Eye arrive and defeat Antoma before she is killed. Jalda Bale saves the bug maid after Gagarin and Tia are killed by the demon's hellfire wall Evil Eye attacks. But Beaumont, a.k.a. Ames, stops him. Mama helps Evil Eye defeat Joel DeBeo. If Evil Eye develops romantic feelings for Mama Ames after he proves himself Jael de Boeth's demi urges equal while defending him, Jal de Beoth leaves the fight saying he will guard an item he is looking for in the city moment, does not follow Evil Eye sighting. Jal de Bayoth's restrained fighting when she mentions how Gagarantia and she nearly killed Entoma. She angers Momo and Ney, Brain Climb and Lockmire are escorting to R when Zero challenges Brain to a fight together. Lockmire and Climb beat Succulent as Tuare and Brain and Zero are evenly matched after rescuing the realtor. Sebus wanders in and sees the fight. Sebas tells Zero that the six arms were killed, shocking him. Zero abandons his fight with Brain to attack Sebas, who kills him with a single drop kick. 
Sebas leaves with Tuare, but promises to repay Climb and Brain for rescuing her. Everyone in the city can see that Jolda Beowuth has made a circle of fire inside the city. Princess Renner arranges for adventurers and soldiers to kill demons in the ring while Climb, Brain, and Lochmire save the citizens. Mama Name and Evil Eye will fight Gel de Bio with in the center. She plans to use adventurers and soldiers as cannon fodder while Mama kills Zalda Beowuth. The Adventurer Coalition rescues civilians in the residential sector while royal guards hold off demons until Mama Name and Evil Eye arrive. Brain challenges a disguise shall tear so his comrades can escape brain cuts, Shelter's fingernail with fourfold slash of light and fleas. As he runs, Shelter notices Climb and Lockmire, leaving them behind after remembering Demiurge's order. The three find a warehouse of civilians pleading for their taken loved ones, confirming the princess's theory of family separation as Mama Name and Evil Eye meet Gelda Bayoth. They see his five masked demon maids while the female adventurers handle the maids' Momong fights. Gelda Bayo Lachius fights demon hordes while supporting matches and heal adventurers until Gazeth arrives with the king's army. Demiurge and Ains discuss Demiurge's plan in an abandoned building. Lastly, all the blame should be put on Gel de Beoth for making Momo more famous. Narborel chats with her sisters as Evil Eye fights. The maids return to their roles when Mare signals an earthquake. Oman brings Jaldev Beoth and Evil Eye together. Jalde Beowuth orders a retreat ending the disturbance. Adventurers and soldiers hail Momong as a kingdom hero. Aura enslaves the remaining Eight Fingers leaders for Ain's oil gown. After some resistance, Gilma convinces the Dark Elf twins to let her make them loyal out of fear of Q Huku. Torture Aura agrees to it, saying that they now control half of the country. Flutter Paradigm tells Baharuth Emperor Germanif Rune Far Lord El Nix that Ain's world gown is more powerful than or equal to him, while wishing to meet Ames personally, Jerknif commands Fluta to investigate Adamantite adventurer Momon as well. Thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe.